Hello my soccer universe, last one for this weekend and yeah the wall behind me is almost complete we finally have sporting here and spoiler very very soon I will have only one jersey per team hanging up there which is kind of my goal uh, and I'm very very excited about that. So yeah, then I can actually maybe change finally the uh, the end screen video and not do the one from last <laughs> year. In any case, um, we had a very interesting week in all three leagues. I very briefly want to touch back, you know, you saw the montage that I made. Hopefully you saw it. Uh, I really couldn't do it and there were quite some interesting um things happening especially in uh, Spain and in France where the title race in both got even I mean Spain it might have opened because Atleti only made one out of six possible points against uh, Levante which uh, had everyone kind of excited maybe Sevilla can swoop in well they kind of uh, they got their result Real Madrid yes they will definitely put them under pressure Barcelona now they actually managed to uh, mess it up a little bit but not getting get mixed against Cardiff. So this was kind of what we saw last uh, week. In uh, Also in France we had the huge loss of PSG after they just were flying over Barcelona. A huge loss to Monaco which actually opened up the gates for a really exciting title race in France as well and putting Monaco within reach of a Champions League spot but potentially a little bit also in the championship um, um, conversation and you know uh, in, Por in Portugal Porto and Sporting both got their wins and back on track ahead of their big clash. So this was kind of what we uh, were talking about last week and now headlines for this week it's a little bit now we're going back a step. In Spain Atletico uh, kind of answers the really big challenge thrown down by uh, Barcelona who get a huge win at Sevilla. Um, and kind of confirmed that they have not all uh, been that in bad shape. Also, they got a midweek win. So Barcelona uh, had a great week for them. And Atletico Madrid really needed to get a win, especially after the loss to uh, Chelsea. And then Real Madrid kind of let it slide. Kind of let it slide and um, might have put themselves out of the conversation. Maybe next week they're in the conversation again. In France, PSG bounced back against Lowly Dijon. And you could see that this big win kind of put some nervous touches onto Lille and Lyon, who did not get a win. Uh, and so that race tilted a little bit more towards PSG, but I think still France is the most exciting league that we have. And in Portugal, I think we can proclaim sporting champions for the first time since 2002. Like, I didn't realize that. I mean, this is pretty, pretty big. Uh, but Sporting fan of Porto and that is probably all that they needed. With a, even with a defeat I think Sporting would have looked good. But having that draw, that's a big uh, step, step so especially since they have not lost in the league so far. I think they only lost in the cup and in the Europa League qualification to last guy. We'll keep on repeating Sporting. I love this jersey that I have over there, but I have to say Sporting is in many ways Austria's favorite Portuguese team because for some reason they managed to lose against uh, Austrian teams. In any case, let's jump into La Liga where in the midweek Barcelona, and you know because of all the Champions League I didn't really pay much attention to it, uh, got a 3-0 win over Elche who are uh, last place with Messi scoring two goals, you know everyone, yeah Messi, 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 Messi. Messi, but this was sorely needed for Barcelona to kind of um, get themselves back in this tr uh, track because Barcelona actually in the league have actually putting up the results. So yeah, uh, with that Barcelona actually goes ahead of Sevilla, meaning that if they could get a result at, uh, at Sevilla, they would actually move ahead of them. But before that, we, I saw a little bit of Levante against Bilbao, a preview of the second leg uh, that is played in the cup. It was a severe Barcelona. So, I mean, there's the double right there. Uh, the first leg, they ended 1 1. This game ended 1 1. Two penalties. Uh, I thought Barcelona, uh, Bilbao, no, Barcelona was slightly the better team, but yeah, um, 1 1. So be it. Um, but then Barcelona showed up at Sevilla, and I have to say, they 
surprised, I think, everyone by playing only two up front with Dembele and Messi. And having, you know, either you call it 3 5 2 or 5 3 2, it was a very um, unorthodox Barcelona system that Sevilla could not cope with. Also, it has to be said, Sevilla didn't really show up, but what the system actually helped is uh, gave um, uh, Barcelona a vertical threat. And they were much the better team, especially for our first half. And um, I think when Dembele made it 1 0, Barcelona probably should have had already a goal. Messi says, setting up with a, a move that we haven't seen from Barcelona. Quick transition, move moving forward, Dembele can pull it in. Uh, and in the second half, I have to say again, Sevilla could not answer. Uh, and I a little bit have the feeling that, you know, Papu is. I love Papu Gomez. If you can get Papu Gomez work at Sevilla, I think this uh, will pay huge dividends. But he has not found his footing in this team yet. And uh, is kind of always a little bit caught out. And he needs a, a, a play a little bit like um, Atalanta with uh, the press and the quick transitions with Sevilla at the moment does not quite have. And again, I say it, Sevilla tends to be one of the most frustrating teams in Europe because uh, like Roma, they get, and you know, Monchi was also at Roma, they get the, the wins against the lower pawns, but uh, then they hit the ceiling, you, you usually get the, get against the better pawns. Yes, they got the big win over Barcelona in the cup, but now in the league, yeah, we have to see it reeked of typical Sevilla, uh, yeah, you think you're really great and then when you want to prove it in a big game, you kind of fizzle out and it happened this time to time again. I mean, I also have to say Messi for once did not convince me all, all the much and the second goal was kind of a little bit um, uh, symbolic for, for that because first he makes this a great typical Messi move, he gets the shot off, which is not quite right. I mean, uh, he wants to go to get it over the keeper, but the keeper pulls it back and he kind of stumbles it into the net. Uh, it was not a typically messy performance in that sense, but he gets his goal and Barcelona is on track with, a, as I said, pretty big win and a pretty big win that also put Atletico Madrid under pressure. Another pretty huge game was Getafe against Valencia, where uh, that was who can stay a little bit out of, of, of relegation and border the last guitar, guitar because it was under huge pressure there as well. However, they win 3-0 over Valencia. Definitely have that Diakabi in the second half, early second half got sent off and it was 1-0 for Getafe and then Juan Mata uh, and Alenia late on uh, pile on, 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 on the result and Valencia is not a team looking up there. Definitely need to look down, which is an absolute, absolute shame. Um, and then Villarreal against Atlet Atletico Madrid. Honestly, I didn't see much. I saw, the, I saw the goals, I saw a little bit of the highlight. Atletico Madrid, I think, had five shots, three of which went the goal, two went in. And it was a typical Atletico Madrid performance that every time that Villarreal took control of the game, they scored. Uh, the first one was an uh, uncle by Alfonso Petras and then Joao Felic. The second one, uh, an angry Joao Felic, and it's still not quite clear. I personally think he's angry at the coach, but the coach uh, relishes that a lot. And so I think it's all fine for Atletico Madrid. They desperately needed to get this win at a team that they don't manage to win. On the other hand, Villarreal, that is a super talented team. and. They, again, they don't get wins, they get too, too, too many draws, which means that they are in trouble because they look like a team that could probably challenge for top four. Not quite so. I actually watched yesterday Real Madrid against Real Sociedad, a rare Monday night appearance for Real Madrid. And I have to say, first half, it started out Real Sociedad on the front foot, putting uh, Madrid under, under trouble, but then as the half went on, I definitely thought that Real Madrid should, should have scored a goal. I mean, there was a huge chance by Asensio, I think once... Um, um, Sociedad defender cleared on the crossbar. I mean, there were chances. Real Madrid was definitely more in the game. And then in the second half, uh, you think it is the same way going, but then um, the player that has been conspicuously absent scores um, the goal Porto after a cross from Nacho Monreal, uh, where they, sh they show it then how the forwards actually split the defense of Real Madrid so nicely, so the Porto had uh, a favorable man, man manager gives Real Sociedad the lead. Real Sociedad, I thought, was the better team and probably should have scored a second one. I mean, a uh, little bit more uh, concentration. Isaac they had an, an uncharacteristic off game. And so it comes as it 
Your usual camp that uh, Vinicius Junior gets a late equalizer, and I always was afraid that Real Madrid might snatch a win there as well, which would not have been deserved. I think on balance of play, the draw was all right, but um, you know, the sensation was a little bit there that the Real Sociedad might get that one. So, with that, Atletico Madrid fans of the attack of Barcelona who now overtake Real Madrid based on goal difference. And I was a little bit taken aback that actually it's Barcelona who has still the most goal and by far in La Liga. That I did not expect, but you know, uh, it is what, what it is. Atletico Madrid with that win and with Real Madrid dro dropping off uh, the positions for Barcelona, Real also swapped in the chances and Atletico Madrid getting a little bit of a boost, uh, winning the championship again, especially with a game in hand. And um, if they can turn it around, they had a little slump now, if they can turn it around, I think Atletico Madrid is still very, very safe to go there. Sevilla, yeah. I think uh, fourth place is reserved for them, although if they get the win in the makeup game, which is at the end, uh, then maybe they can, uh, we can talk about uh, finishing ahead of, you know, leapfrogging one of the two giants. Um, Betis has been in pretty good shape, uh, kind of a little bit, un you know, undercover, getting in there like a submarine. Uh, going ahead of Villarreal. On the ball are many, 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 many changes. Um, Elche now, you know, they have been riding high because they had so many games in hand, but they have lost all of them. So uh, they are a little bit going down. Um, interesting, of course, to adjust the table. We see again, Atletico Madrid is definitely outperforming their own expectations still. Uh, Elche also on the, on the bottom, but El Elche is down. There's no real change. Uh, there are a few games in hand here, here and there, but there's no real change based on these. Uh, expected standings now, since with Real Madrid top dropping points, Barcelona moves ahead of uh, Real Madrid. And uh, Betis also uh, goes ahead of Villarreal there. And then again, some changes in midfield. Valencia still kind of on the safe-ish side, but it doesn't look good. We have... Copa del Rey semi-final. Barcelona having to make up a 2-0 uh, deficit. And Levante Athletic Club. Will this be another 1-1? One, one? This will go penalties and, and, and so on. I, if you ask me personally, since Athletic Club is already playing against the rest of that in one final, I don't want them necessarily to be in second final. So I think I would love if Levante could go on. But let's see. Um, it's nothing against Bilbao, it's just for the fact I don't want Bilbao to play two core core Copa del Rey finals in one season. They just see uh, in one year or within one month or so, this just seems weird. Um, and let's see if Barcelona can turn it around against Sevilla. I think this will be a game that Sevilla probably will get a goal and then that settles it. On the weekend, the big one. Atletico Madrid, Real Madrid. I think uh, last chance. We also have a Derby de la Comunidad between Valencia and Villarreal. Two teams in big trouble. So uh, look out for that one. Sevilla game at Elche could put themselves back in position. Barcelona against Osasuna. Uh, if there's a draw against Atletico and Real Madrid, I think Barcelona uh, will be big smiles. Of course, if Atletico should win, Real Madrid is out and Barcelona puts again more distance between themselves and Real Madrid, which is also important. Uh, should Real Madrid win? Then I think we have a we have an open title race again, uh, which definitely will not be in favor of uh, athletic defense. Uh, Real Sociedad Levante also an interesting one. In France, Lorient losing to Nîmes, which actually meant that Nîmes suddenly moves out of the relegation zone. This is a team that seemed dead and buried, and it's still with the chances here. Uh, Nîmes is still very very much favored uh, to um, be relegated. And then uh, I actually saw some highlights of Rennes Nice, when Nice, I think, twice hit the uh, crossbar. And I mean, the Terrier uh, equalizer for Rennes was a great, uh, a great, great one, but Nice uh, deserved to get this one. And I'm a little bit worrying about Rennes there. But the big story, of course, is that PSG got an easy win over Dijon. I mean, Dijon is definitely down there and they wanted to actually score more. Mbappe only got two. He wanted to get a hat-trick, if not more. Uh, Moise can uh, score. So I think uh, they are very well on, on, on the way. Danilo gets another one. I think Draxler had, 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 had a goal disallowed. So easy win for PSG, which piled on the pressure. Monaco could... Uh, 
steady dead pre pressure, but they missed the penalty. Uh, Viv Vivis and Benjeda against Brest. And the, go uh, the goals came later, Jovetic and Folland in the 990s. So a very, very late win, but important win for Monaco to stay in there. However, Lille had a whole lot of luck. Ajorg gave Strasbourg a lead. Uh, Joseph Font very late with one of the few chances that Lille had gets the equalizer uh, and then Strasbourg could have actually uh, scored the winner. And in the Olympic derby, Milik gives Marseille the lead and Marseille very much was... I th no, no, Milik equalizes uh, the goal by Ekambi to give. Sorry, I misread that. Ekambi gave Lyon the lead and Milik equalizes before the half. But then Paqueta is sent off with uh, yellow-red. Marseille definitely going for, for the win. And then you thought uh, Memphis Depay had actually given the win to Lyon, but it was a clear offside. And I still thought that Marseille could snatch it, but it was a 1-1, uh, which meant that Lyon, although they lose lose this position, I think a loss would, would have been even more damaging. But now the pendulum swings back PSG. They were below 50% before that round now. A little bit higher, uh, above 50%. They are still very much the favorites. Now two points behind Lille, you would favor them, especially with head-to-heads still in hand. Monaco, also in there. We have four teams within four points, and it's the top four, and then it's the rest of, of, of the league. On the bottom, it's also Nîmes now going down. Not is now in the relegation zone, which yeah hurts this. I obviously not necessarily that they're my favorite team in France, but I have big sympathies for Not. Uh, I hate to see them back down down there. Similar a little bit, but not as much uh, with Saint at the end, which was also a very traditional team. I honestly don't know who I want to go down because I also like Nîmes. So let's see. Uh, who will go, go down at the moment? Nîmes and Dijon for the fixed spots. Uh, not sh my model thinks they should get out, out, out of it, but it's because they have a better rating. Uh, adjusting doesn't do much here. You see Lille is the positive surprise. And the negative one, probably Staras, Strasbourg. That's a little bit surprising, but not. And Dijon also um, kind of under under Strasbourg. It's definitely uh, lower than they should be. And expect standings, as I said, the top four, it's really, really tight. But PSG is just uh, on average three points ahead of, of the race. But everything can change. And, you know, uh, we have Lyon, PSG and all that kind of stuff. Dijon is the one team that is really down and out. Other than that, Lorient, not Nîmes. Yeah, it's a little bit... I would hate either of these teams going down. Um, we have a big midweek round with Lille, uh, Marseille and Bordeaux, PSG, uh, kind of the big name matchups. Uh, Lyon plays early against Rennes, also not the other better. But there's quite some stuff happening in Strasbourg against uh, Monaco, and Strasbourg can take more points again. And then we have the French Cup for the first time this season. I have here a few selected. Uh, Games from this round of 32. I mean, the big one is Nice against Mon Monaco. Other than that, I think it's the big teams. Uh, I'm looking only for, for first. Um, the teams that are playing Le Liga have to play very low level. Um, I mean, Red Star against Lens is the third division. I think Valenciennes against Metz might be the most competitive otherwise. Um, Angers has the easiest one with playing Club Francis game from Martinique at home. That's uh, French Cup is a big mess if, if i mean you really have to know your um french league football too kind of it's a labyrinth it's labyrinthian in many ways in portugal uh everything porto against sporting and it was a game that first half was kind of stale. The second half it got a little bit alive but it was not like the heated affair that porto benfica was Taremi missing two huge chances for Porto and then uh, I think it was late uh, 75th or a little bit later Sporting had a count, count contact where it, the ball was just put over uh, the, the crossbar where they could well have scored. Porto had more chances but Sporting almost routinely plays it home and gets a big 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 point uh, there because Porto now cannot make up ground. On to uh, sport, Sporting with it. Benfica get a rare win. Braga, as we will see, a very important win, especially considering that they were totally outclassed by Roma. Because if we look at the table now, Braga is suddenly in second spot. That came a little bit out of nowhere. Braga has been racking up wins and they don't lose very often. They have only one draw so far. Porto with that draw is only in third spot at the moment, but I still think that the at least they will finish in second spot. Uh, Benfica, I don't know. Benfica is in a whole lot of heap of trouble. 
And yeah, not that many changes below spot uh, nine at the uh, this season. Uh, you know, the few kept even their spots, so that's unusual. Um, just the standings doesn't change much against Gilles Vicent moves over Farange. Um, expected Sporting is gonna win it. Sporting is gonna win it. And I actually am quite happy about that. Porto will finish out of Braga uh, and Benfica most likely. And then between Passos and Guimaraes is kind of the spot for the last European spot. But you know, we have also the Portuguese Cup where we have a semi-final. It is all geared towards a Porto against Benfica semi-final. Uh, However, Braga with the good form, maybe they can get something at Porto. So that I think is the big one on Wednesday. Benfica should have little trouble with Sturil and um, We'll wait for the winner, Porto against Braga. And in the, on the weekend, it's a very extended round again. Sporting Santa Clara should be an easy win. Belenenge against Benfica, I think similarly. Gil Vicente against Porto also. And Braga plays on Tuesday the derby against Guimaraes. So interesting stuff in Portugal happening too. Yes, three leagues, lots to talk about. Uh, let me know what you thought about the games in all of these countries. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists uh, that you might give interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my uh, channel to give you all the updates, all the things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, have a great day. Thank you.